Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to build another battery project, but this time, unlike some of the others, we actually have a real use for this. Most of the batteries I've made are just general use, powering inverters, whatever. This one, obviously as you can tell, is kind of like an e-bike battery. Got this from Wish.com. This one's a 48 volt, uh, but I actually have also bought a 36 volt or a 10S. And so we're going to tear that one apart and use it for this particular application. I'll reveal what I'm going to be using it for very shortly, but I just want to start out with this. Not really a review of this product, because Wish is just another website like Amazon that just uh, hosts other people selling stuff. It seems to be of decent quality. It really comes down to what you do on the build side that makes it quality or not. Some of the features is it does have a battery built-in monitor, uh, which we will be using. Um, it has a key switch where you can actually turn the voltage on and off. It has wires on it, but I'm not going to use that. Basically on here, we're going to use this port. It's always going to be on, BMS controlled. It'll be used for input and output and so forth. So let's look at our build materials and then we'll go from there. All right, uh, this system comes with these uh, battery grids for 18650s. So we'll be using those. Uh, the nice thing about them, as you can tell, they kind of do the zigzag pattern to fit them more um, efficiently inside the space given. And so they also included um, these tabs that you can um, tack on, which we will be using. That one is for an end, and then it uses these bridge ones so we can create our series, and they fit quite nicely into their design. So I like that about these. I don't have to create a bunch of, uh, use a bunch of extra and build my own. They, it came with those, so that was a good thing. Um, the top part that holds all the electronics, I kind of gutted a bunch of the other stuff that's not needed. I will be putting the, the lock back in. I just wanted to snip the wires off because I wasn't going to use that and I wanted to kind of clean in there. So that's going to go back in the big hole and then that's going to be the power in and out and then we're going to attach the electronics um, for the battery meter. And here's the case. It's the same one as I just showed you, just a little shorter. Um, and then it has this gasket that goes around the ring. So we'll be putting this all back together, but let me go ahead and reveal what we're going to be using. Um, we're going to use this to power. Um, it's an e-bike battery, so you might think e-bike, but no, it's, a, it's an electronic vehicle of some sorts, but it's actually uh, a lawnmower. Uh, it uses these Ryobi 40... Uh, volt batteries which are actually just 10s uh, doubled up uh, 10s 2p and so I have um, taken one that I had that was no good anymore and um, took it apart and I'm not going to show how I did that in the video because I don't think I did it very carefully and I don't want to give anybody the wrong idea but what I did uh, is I just gutted everything but the little electronic board um, that gives us to the pins and so I think this is either the negative or positive. I'll look it up again when I get there. But I'm just going to run a wire into here um, that will connect to the battery. And you'll see how that's done when it comes time. But that's the project. We're going to use this. Um, one of the other features about this system is it has this nice little channel here. And um, it has this bar that you can put in there and when you turn the key it has this post that comes in and out and will lock it into place so when it comes time is I'll mount this on the lawnmower someplace and then when it comes time you can actually feed it in and then it locks into place I got it on backwards you get the idea and that way it's it's removable but uh, somewhat secure when you're using it so next step is I'm going to start populating the grid so I'm going to populate them with these 18650s I got these from batteryhookup.com um, they were uh, one of those quick specials that they had where they had a bunch of ring batteries um, let's see if I can find one of those real quick so yeah it has one of these rings and it has two cells in there and uh, I bought 50 of them so that means I have 100 available to me I only pulled out 50 for this project um, and so that will give us a 5S uh, 10 no, 10S 5P setup, but these were really nice. They were pretty darn cheap, and every one of them tested over 3 amps. So that's the record I'm going for is 3 amp hours uh, per cell. So times 5, it should be 15. 
So we'll do a battery test once everything's assembled and, and powered up. So now I'm going to populate the cells, put on the tabs, and then we'll wire in the BMS and go from there. All right, we got the pack here populated. Uh, just one word of warning, since these are all going to be in parallel, you want them to be very close in voltage. Um, I went and tested every one. I think they're close enough. Um, they shouldn't have too much. The problem being is if one is too weak, um, the other one will just dump a lot of current into it and they can actually um, overload the cell and the strip so they could get red hot or hot and just be damaging. So make sure um, everything in your pair. They don't have to be the same um, in your series. Uh, you just need to make sure you top balance it or bottom balance it before you put it into service. But um, you know, I would suggest putting your BMS on and just monitor it and let it uh, auto balance um, until it's all good and then you can charge it or discharge it however you want to start. This uh, pack is obviously designed for like 13S, so I've got plenty of space. I put the BMS in here so it's nice and um, clean inside the tube. So next thing is to start adding the tabs and then we'll wire up the BMS. All right, we got one side done here. Um, I made sure to tape as I went along. Um, this is just the one side, so there's no shorting possibility at this moment, but I went ahead and just taped it up to be safe. Um, and so I'm gonna start on the bottom side and then we'll attach the BMS. All right, uh, it's fully connected now. Uh, I've checked the voltage, all the series look good. Hoping all my welds are hold. Um, find out when I do a charge if any of them are loose. Obviously the smallest cell will set off the BMS so I'll know. So I should get at least 15 amp hours if not more um, depending on how quickly I charge stuff like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach the BMS on top here. I should have plenty of clearance in my case uh, for that to fit right there. And so the trace wires will go back here and then they'll go to these tabs and then we'll solder them, tape them, and then we'll be one step closer to a completed build. And then I'll be getting it into the case and wiring all that up. So stay tuned. All right, pack is fully assembled. We've got our lead wires attached. We've got uh, the traces to the BMS, BMS mounted, and we've insulated our tabs here with some Kepton tape. And so we're ready to shortly put it into its case. But one last thing I want to figure out is which one of these poles is going to be positive or negative. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to take apart a cable that has the uh, male part here and then you know check the other side. And I'm not sure what the color, I'm sure there's like white in there. So we'll figure out which color we want to make red and which one we make brown. And then we'll decide which one of these poles will be that. Um, because this is a custom project, we can do whatever we want, but I want the colors to help match up so we don't make any accidental shorts. So we're going to take that cable apart, and, uh, and then we'll decide where to put this, and then we'll start putting it in its case. All right, after doing a little bit of test with the multimeter, um, I found that the brown wire is the bottom left, and that blue wire is the bottom right. And so that will be the two prongs I'll use. I'll use the left side for ground and use the right side for positive using dark and a light color. And so that will be how we'll wire things up. So the next thing is I'm going to put some posts on my BMS lead wires and then we'll put it into the, uh, the case and then we'll go from there. All right, we've got everything pretty much buttoned up. Um, last thing to do is to attach the power here. I've soldered these wires which go up to this uh, battery meter so we'll be able to do a quick battery check on the voltage and available and so we've got our heat shrinked terminal plugs and so I'm going to button this up and then all that's left is to modify the wire and mount onto the battery and then give it a test so let's do that now. All right, we've got the battery pack totally built out. Uh, we've plugged up a couple of these extra holes. There was a fuse here and an auxiliary charging port, which I'm not going to use. So now we're going to go to the battery. Here it is. I already showed you this earlier. Uh, I didn't show you what I did because it was probably pretty dangerous. Uh, my suggestion, if you need to get this circuit board, is to totally kill the battery. That means get inside and actually discharge the cells to zero voltage. And then I just took a Dremel and just cut this part because that's what I need. It has the pins. 
So what I'm going to do is this is the positive, this is the ground. So I'm just going to take a long bit of the wire and just hit both of these solder points so I get as much uh, current uh, capability as possible. And then I'm going to uh, put the hole for the cord right there so that this part can come off completely without me having to worry about anything. So there's going to be a hole here. I'm going to run the wires through these um, four points. So we're going to bridge here for positive, bridge here for ground. And um, then we'll be able to um, give it a test drive. So I'm going to work on that. All right, we got that finished up. We got our wire soldered there. We've got a hole right there. And I took a zip tie and uh, put it at the end and then super glued it. So that way there's tension relief. Um, you jank on the cord and hopefully nothing comes loose in here. And these solders are pretty tight. And um, so next thing is to put the cap back on. And then the last piece is to mount this to the lawnmower and uh, then give it a try. My grass is pretty tall today, and so um, I'm gonna give it a go. My hope is that uh, it will last the entire time. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm building this, is that I have two other bigger batteries, but I still can't get the whole yard done with two batteries. And then I still need the batteries for trimming and other stuff, weed eating. So hopefully this will take care of the lawnmower, and then my other batteries could take care of everything else. So let's finish this up and then uh, we'll give it a test. All right, we're getting really close. Um, I grabbed this plastic crossbar from the lawnmower and went ahead and mounted this rail. Um, and so really all we've got left now is to um, put it uh, on the lawnmower and give it a try. So um, I'm gonna do that now, take you a picture and then um, in the comments, um, I will let you know if it lasted for the entire um, lawnmower cutting session. Not that that helps you too much because I don't even know how much acreage I have. Um, but it would be good to know that it, at least I achieved my goal. And if not, it was still a fun project to build the battery and to use it in a very um, useful way. So let me uh, put this back on the lawnmower, hook up the battery, and uh, get mowing. All right, guys. See you in all right, we got everything mounted. It's a little messy with the wire. I made it really long, but it's all about working. And so we've got the battery in there. Let's see if it uh, powers up. There it goes. All right. Good test, so I'll uh, cut the lawn and hopefully it'll last the entire session. All right, thanks for watching, guys.